Welcome to Rock Solid Productions, where in this episode we are going to unbox and test out the 8-bit Doe SN30 wireless 2.4 GHz gamepad for the Super NES Classic and the NES Classic. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. No, not John Riggs. Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Um, and we today got in the mail the SN30 wireless gamepad from 8-Bit Doe. Now, if you're not familiar with 8-Bit Doe, they make a series of great controllers for a number of different devices. Now, up to this point, the controllers that they've created, like these two that I have here, work off of Bluetooth technology. And because of that, they are a little pricier than what this one is here. Anytime a product uses something like Bluetooth, it actually has to be licensed uh, through the Bluetooth consortium or something along those lines. So they have to pay a royalty fee. It's kind of like including HDMI. You have to pay a royalty fee for that. You may not have known that. So what 8-Bit Doe has done has been to opt for a 2.4 gigahertz solution on this controller here. And what that does is it helps reduce the cost to the end consumer right off the bat because they no longer have to pay that royalty for using Bluetooth technology. Now with 2.4 gigahertz, you should have relatively interference free uh, performance on here. This does feature some really neat aesthetics and everything to it. We are going to unbox it and then we are going to hook it up to both the Super NES Classic and the NES Classic to see how it performs. So looking at the box here for the SN30 wireless gamepad, you can see right on front, you know, one of the first differences on this versus some of the other 8-bit Doe controllers is it is 2.4 gigahertz, as I mentioned. Slightly different uh, graphics and styling on the face of it as well. On the side, as you can see here, it includes the uh, 2.4 gigahertz controller, the receiver, a USB cable, and an instruction manual. On the back, you can see here, it's also stating that it is compatible with the SNES and the Super Famicom Classic Edition. And then you can visit 8bitdo.com for more support. So let's pop this open. And we shall set the box aside for now. So there is the dongle itself, four screws on the back very similar to the other dongles. It does come with a very nice long length uh, USB to micro USB cable for charging and your instruction cable or instruction manual itself. Let's first of all look at the overall features and design on it. Um, it does have the same button configuration as the US Super NES, so you have convex and concave buttons here. L and R on top. There's your micro USB port nothing on the back. Overall looks very similar to their original Super NES wireless gamepad which we have here and it looks like they've used the same molds but what they've done is they've taken this gray and put it pretty much over the entire face to kind of give it a different aesthetic. Now you can see the size comparison there. Let's compare it to the Hyperkin controller which we've recently reviewed here on the channel. There you can see almost identical dimensions. The Nyko Super Mini Boss does look a little bit deeper that way. And it does not look like the LNR wrap around quite as far as on the Nyko on the Nico controller. And the Yoke controller, as you can see, completely different design still. A little bit wider and taller than the Yoke controller. And then this has been my favorite 8-bit Doe controller to this point because of the fact it has the analog sticks on here along with an L1, L2 on the very top of the controller so that you can use it with like N64 games quite a bit larger than that. But again, this is a more unique design versus the 8-bit Doe gamepad. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it in, see if we need to pair the controller before we can actually play, and we're gonna do some playthroughs on it. Now, one other final thing on the 8-bit dough controller, looking closely, these screws are not Phillips head screws, they are actually security bits. So you're gonna need a tri-wing screwdriver if you want to modify your Super NES Classic Edition to hide the dongle inside the system like we've shown you how to do here on the channel. You can check that out right up there. So I will say out of the box, I plugged the dongle for the 8-bit dough gamepad into my NES Classic, they were paired. Thank you, 8-bit dough. Other accessory manufacturers, please take note. If you have this in a dongle, in a box, pair them for the consumer. Save them that extra pain in the rear end. It just, it's one of those things I wish more companies would do. One of the reasons I've actually been a pretty big fan of 8-Bit Dough over the years. Um, so we have, first off, we have the NES Classic here. As I've mentioned, I do have it hacked with Hack Chi. We are gonna dump into the uh, NES ROMs or the NES games here first, see how it plays. Let's go to Batman from Sunsoft. And we'll push so uh, start. Left, right works. B. So Y, A, B, X. And L and R don't do anything. So, so B is my weapons. And A is jump. Um, feels really pretty good. Um, uh, you know, I can't really complain a whole lot thus far. I was able to do the, the wall grab there without too much of an issue. This is one of those games that I really wish that I would spend more time with. There's just so much to play, though, out there. So far, so good. It's... It's everything that I'm looking for so far in a, a wireless controller for either the SNES or, or NES Classic Editions. I guess I need to go down here. Again, one of those where, like I say, I need to play this game a little bit more. Yeah, uh, Batman on uh, the NES Classic Edition, working well. You know, and that's that wall jump is a perfect example of if you've got any lag or delay where you're going to really notice it and worked well. So now here's the other thing is I want to see if down and select. Now 8-Bit Doe has put that into some of their other controllers. Let's see if it's in this one. It is. Thank you. That's another thing that I wish that... Uh, a lot of other manufacturers would do. Let us go to DuckTales. Woohoo! And one of the greatest platformers of all time. There we go. That's what I was looking for. If you have never played the original DuckTales for the NES, you really need to. Such, I mean, it's it's the best of uh, Capcom platforming, really. Let's see if we can get the hidden stuff here. This is one of the first games where I play. It's like, oh my god, there's all these hidden levels and areas you can get to. I gotta say, it's working perfectly on DuckTales. Oh, I am not working perfectly on DuckTales, however. So let's go back to our main menu here. Let's try out, uh, let's try out Double Dragon. But so far, I mean, this is, this is locked in. I'm really liking this. Now, unlike, say, the, the Yoke wireless controller that I have tested here on the channel in the past, there is no, uh, and, and the Nyko Super Mega Boss, too, um, there is no turbo functionality on this controller. Uh, one of the things, if you've played this and then you haven't played and then you come back, it's like, oh, where are all my moves? Because if you haven't gotten all your, your leveled up and everything, it's kind of a pain. Uh, if you want to see some really fun gameplay footage of Double Dragon, make sure you check out NES Addict's channel. I'll have his information down below. 
uh, but he does a lot of playthroughs or attempted playthroughs on Double Dragon. Um, definitely one of the the more experienced Double Dragon players out there that I've ever seen. Yeah, Double Dragon seems pretty good. And really quite happy with how this is performing so far. Um, very comfortable in the hand. I mean, it's it feels just like the, the original Super NES controller. Yeah, no, uh, no issues with Double Dragon. Down and select again. Let's go back to the main menu on here. Again, this is uh, modified with Hackchi. So let's dive into the Sega Genesis games quick. You know what? We showed you Batman on the NES. Let's look at Batman on the Genesis. So there's jump, there's punch, and there's your weapons. And I'm out. I'm out of weapons already? That sucks! Well, that's kind of cool that you've got the the bat hook or whatever you want to call it to be able to ascend. If you can find something to ascend to. This is working just fine. Down and select. And now you guys know, you, you had to know Earthworm Jim was common. So I'll check out Earthworm Jim. Um, because this is one of the, the games, too, where uh, there's the one, one part coming up very early in the game that um, there's a like an, an extra uh, bonus or something like that that you need to bounce on the tires to get to. And if there's lag or latency or, or other issues, that uh, it's right here in just a second to get to the platform. Two tries, worked fine. So we will take advantage of that. So definitely good responsiveness on the, uh, on the controller itself. That's, you know, a, a definite advantage over like the, uh, the recently reviewed Hyperkin. Let's check out Mickey's Castle of Illusion. Um, widely regarded as one of the best platformers out there. And A shot, B shot, C is jump or attack. So let's press start again. So as of right now, oh, I guess I can't jump on him. A is jump. B and Y don't do anything. I think it's because I need to collect apples. Yeah, that's what it is. Needed to collect some apples. And it's working fine here. Did a double butt bounce there, which was kind of cool. Looks like I'm out of apples right now. There's a couple more. So popping out of Mickey's Castle of Illusion, uh, one thing that I have actually been having some issues with my NES Classic Edition playing ROMs properly on the Genesis. It kind of crashes and locks up every once in a while. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go straight to the Super NES games real quick. We'll try a couple of these out before we move on to the SNES Classic itself. Oh, final fight. Let's do some final fight. Great beat em up. So, A, da, or B, Y, X. There's really a two button beat em up if I remember right, for the most part. So far, so good. At this point, we are going to go back to the main menu. We're going to power down the NES Classic, because remember, this is testing on the NES Classic. We're going to hook up the SNES Classic and see how the 8-bit DOE 2.4 gigahertz controller works. So far, so good. Just navigating the menus. Uh, one of the things we're going to go to first, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And going to remap the controls real quick. I like uh, my high punch and high kick to be on X and A. 
So, option. High punch X. And high kick A. And once again, I'm going to get Dalsim. It seems like I always get Dalsim when I start off with Ryu. Much easier than the Hyperkin controller to pull off the uh, Hidokins. Got him. Oh, he got me. Got me with the Yoga Flame. Sweep the leg, Johnny. Sweep the leg. Oh, got him. Um, as you saw there, I was pulling off Hidokens really easily. I um, want to see if I can do the uh, the Dragon Punch. I was, there's the Shuriken. Yeah, much, uh, much better controller responsiveness than the Hyperkin. I'll tell you that right now. Not an issue. Um, pretty good. Really liking this so far. Down and select. We're going to go back to the main screen. Let us go to Super Castlevania 4. Again, another great title on here. And this is one of those where that, that angled whip attack is something that in this game is always very telling whether or not you've got uh, good responsiveness or not. And so far, so good. Um, yeah, really very responsive. I mean, I'll tell you quite honestly, it feels like they're Bluetooth controllers. You know, I'm able to do that uh, that that down angled attack very consistently. No issues whatsoever here on uh, Super Castlevania 4. There again, doing that that angled whip attack, even kind of doing the 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 doke or whatever you want to call it, with uh, where you can kind of do that with the whip. Really kind of an underrated attack in Super Castlevania 4. Yeah, very, very responsive. I mean, I'm, just, I'm, I'm very impressed for 25 bucks. Um, very good. Yeah, no complaints on Super Castlevania 4. Let's go. I still suck at this, but let's try Super Ghouls and Ghosts for our last game. And then we'll wrap things up here in a second. Yeah, not a problem. Now, me not sucking, that could be a problem. Because this is definitely not one of my best games. Hey! If I can't shoot down through things like that... Well, I'm already walking around in my boxers, which is kind of sad. Bad dog. Try that one more time. And you have to beat this game twice to beat it. That's the thing. That's the crazy part about this game. Oh, what was that? That was a dirty trick. Brains. See, that's what I was expecting the first time around was to get the uh, the the double shot like that. Whoa! Oh, that sucked. It's kind of interesting there. I was actually able to do a a triple jump. Bad dog. I really suck at this game. Not the controller's fault. Let's wrap things up. So there you have it, our overview of the 8-Bit Doe 
2.4 gigahertz wireless gamepad for the NES Classic, the Super NES Classic, and the Super Famicom Classic Editions. And I gotta say, this is spot on. It works great. The connectivity and the locked in feel is exactly what you're looking for out of a wireless controller. Unlike the Hyperkin controller that I recently reviewed, I had no issues like in Super Street Fighter 2 pulling off the uh, Dragon Upper Punch, the Shurukens, Hadokens, anything like that. It was pretty spot on. Also didn't have any issues really with any of the games. I felt really connected and locked in using this controller. And I know a lot of times you may think, well, it's not Bluetooth, so it may not be as good. The 2.4 gigahertz profile that they used on this, it's spot on. Um, you know, no issues whatsoever. And the fact that out of the box, it came prepared to the wireless dongle is awesome. Now one thing looking at it right here is there's a real small pinhole. I'm not sure if that's for pairing if you need to, but at most if that's what you gotta do, I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, exceptional range, good connectivity, great controls and features. I just really suck at some of these games, so um, definitely worth checking out. Now, if you do want to pick up one of the 8-Bit Doe game pads, you can do so at the affiliate link I'll have down below in the more info section. But let me know what you think. These are just my opinions. What kind of controllers are you using with your NES Classic or Super NES Classic Edition? Let me know down in the comments. You can also email me if you have any other questions about the 8-Bit Doe wireless game pad for the uh, Super NES Classic and the NES Classic Edition by emailing me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can also hit me up on Twitter too, at rocksolidstudios. I uh, would love to talk to all of you guys and gals out there to see what kind of experiences you're having with your Super NES Classic Editions and wireless controllers. Um, I'm feeling a shootout coming soon because I've got this one here. I've got the Yoke controller. I've got the Hyperkin. I've got the uh, the Nyko Mini Boss, the Super Mini Boss. Mm -hmm. Keep tuned to the channel because I think what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do a side by side by side shootout and, and kind of go through the features and benefits of each one of them. Um, and again, I want to kind of know what you guys think out there too. Would you be interested in seeing something like that? Um, you can also go ahead uh, and visit me on our Facebook page too, facebook.com slash Productions. And if you do want to help contribute to the channel for as little as a dollar a month, you can help do so by visiting our Patreon page, patreon.com slash rocksolid. And uh, like I say, for as little as a dollar a month, uh, you can help support the channel so we can pick up cool gear like the 8-bit dough 2.4 gigahertz wireless gamepad. This one here we got off of Amazon.com. Again, affiliate link down below. And also got to thank John Riggs for this super awesome shirt. Uh, he did have a kind of fundraiser going back in December for this. Make sure that you check out John's channel. I'll have a link to it down below too. Speaking of shirts, we are doing a promo here on Rocksaw Productions where all Patreons of $25 or higher in a single month will hook you up with a Rock Solid Productions t-shirt, so pretty cool. The 8-Bit Doe 2.4 gigahertz wireless controller, really, really good. You should definitely check it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.